Hey lads, this is day 151 of my series to get to 2k on chess.com and we are playing the black pieces against Queen's Pawn. We're going into a Dutch and we will put the bishop out here, pin this bishop to the king. He's going to attack us, so we'll take that and we'll develop our knight to f6. Trying to move slightly quicker than I have in the past because I don't want to fall into time trouble. Almost pre-moving, but not quite. No. Uh, I'm thinking about the next moves here. Putting the pawn here to stop the knight coming in. I will also Fanchetta the bishop, so it's on a solid square. Now the queen can't move. If this queen moves, we take this, and that opens up his king. Queen over, getting onto this diagonal here. Okay, two defenders of this, and we have two defenders. If he takes here, I will just recapture. That'll be fine with me. I really have to think about this. If I take here myself, he can just recapture. I can capture. He captures. This file's open. It's interesting. Thinking about knight here. Seems decent. If he just takes here now, I can't recapture with the queen because uh, my queen will be pinned. If he ca captures here now, I can't recapture with the rook. What about going here? Then if he captures, we capture here. And we move in this way. Nah, it looks a bit risky. I think I will capture. I think it's it's either this move or this move, I think, or this move. But this no, this move doesn't work because he takes. So just I'll just capture here. I think I have to do this. He's going to recapture with the bishop. And now my bishop's not protected, so I will swap off these pieces. And I can just move in here. Because this is a free tempo on his on his rook, but but maybe that allows his queen to develop. Maybe going here. Um. Here or here. Going here is good because it leaves my rook a wee bit of room, so my rook can move around. Going here seems okay because it hits the rook and it, it's on this um, area here that we want to attack on. Maybe moving the pawn because eventually I do want to move this and get the other rook in. Pawn? Pawn g5? Could also go f7 and just sort of go after this guy. Ah, oh dear, decisions. If I go here, he has this move. But then I would jump in here and have two attackers here and you have to drop back. And then we could go for this one. I think I'm okay doing this. But wait, uh, if I go here, he has rook here. And then I'd just be forced to drop back. Uh, I could put the rook here, uh, the queen here. Okay, so I've eliminated this one. Here or this move with the pawn. I am thinking a lot here. If I go here, he doesn't have this. He'll just defend here. I think I'm going to try this because I do eventually want my queen uh, or, or my king move over and get this other rook in. I don't. I don't see it as too bad. And now I'll attack this guy. He's attacking this square, but he can't take it because it's defended twice.
I'm very happy taking that pawn. And I will recapture with this knight, which looks very good for me. Uh, that was a mistake by him. Trying to make some quicker decisions here. I now have this move forking both of his rooks. And I'm going to play it. I also have ideas of, of back ranks here. Okay, if I take this one now, I take this one, lets him double his pawns. Taking this one, he's gonna put his queen on a not so great square. Okay, I'm gonna take this one. And now, it would be fantastic if I could trade off pieces. He's going after this twice, but I think what I'll do is I'll just go in for the attack here. Go for this pawn. He's probably going to move it. He's looking at this square. I can simply just drop back, I think. Drop back, or even just move my king. Let's move my king, I think, because dropping back, then he can he can go after this. Here, here. If I have a queen here, um, I'm trying to see how best to do this. Maybe um, put the queen here. I'm not entirely sure, but I do think this pawn's a little bit of a weakness. So maybe we just start m marching the pawn. I could also go here. Oh wait, what am I saying? <laughs> I was looking at this. Okay, let's just um, let's just sort of try to solidify this pawn a little bit. We've got this weakness here, but he's got this weakness here. So maybe pushing these pawns actually. Yeah, I shouldn't be allowing this, but we can attack him here. And I always have ideas of the back rank here, because this king is still on the back rank. Trying to move with a bit of tempo. He can't take this. He can't go back. He can't go here. He does have this move, but this move, we go here, and then where's he going? He can't go to these ones. He can't go here, 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 or here. His knight is now trapped. Because he got greedy grabbing pawns. I guess he can defend here, but we can also attack again. Can't come here. Yep, 
Yeah, as long as we cover these squares that the knight can jump to, we'll be fine here. So I'm assuming he's trying to get his queen. Like if his queen was here, then he could maybe defend this square or something. Or if his queen was here, he could defend this square. But he just doesn't have time. So he needs to go here. And then we're going to respond with this. And have two attackers on the knight. If we have two attackers on here, he's only got one defender. So this move just delays this move. And then he's going to go here because he's trying to have another defense of getting the knight out. But it's not going to work because we'll just capture. Or even capture this way. Attack his rook. So we know what he's going to do, and we know how to stop it. Um, this is looking good for me. Guys, uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, I'm going to be starting to do live streams where I'm doing like a training session. So it'll be half of it'll be some blitz games and then it'll also be some training. I think that's the format that I'm gonna do. But um, the first one's gonna be tonight and I'm going through a new book that I bought, a chess book called The Woodpecker Method. Um, so quite excited about this book. Um, wait, hold up. Was there a different move that I missed? Um, he had this because now the rook defends. What am I saying? But I can just go here. And we are attacking this twice. Um, we're going to be going through the woodpecker method, which is pretty exciting. It's supposed to really help your tactics. Um, it's supposed to be a fantastic book. Um, so I'm quite excited about it. But um, if you want to learn chess, if you want to get better at tactics, join me on the stream. Uh, I'm going to try to do uh, every night this week. Um, so today's Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so we'll, we'll do the streams at 9 p.m., which is, um, English time. Uh, so wherever you are in the world, you can look up what 9 p.m. English time is. If you want to join the, uh, the streams, I'm going to grab this for free. Um, and, uh, 9 p.m., English time is, uh, I had this move here. Yeah, okay. Um, 9 p.m. is uh, two hours after the video usually uploads. Uh, let me just jump into the review here to see how we did. A 90.5% accuracy. I'm very happy to see that. I do want to break down this game real quick, just so you can sort of understand my process of thinking. In this game, I played the Dutch, and in the Dutch, you're controlling the center with a side pawn. This is kind of like the Sicilian. Uh, if white ever plays king's pawn, you can move the C pawn, which controls the center with a side pawn. You're controlling the center of the board with a side pawn, and you keep your center pawns for use a little bit later maybe in the game. This move just supports your pawn, and it's kind of just the opposite of what I do in the Sicilian. In the Sicilian, we go like this, and a lot of the time they do this, and I just play this move. It's the same kind of setup, just sort of in reverse. He brings his knight out, so we bring our bishop out to pin this knight. And ideas of bringing our knight here to f6 and then to e4 so that we have two pieces attacking this knight. The knight can't move, he can't get out uh, because the king is behind. So usually what happens is you take this knight off at some point. I took with the rook here. It's saying it's not the best move to take with the rook. It would have been slightly better to take with the queen. But often, I feel in the Dutch, you do want to lift this rook and have an attack. So that's why I lifted it. This was the point in the game where I spent the most time thinking. I wasn't sure about this move, if I should let anything else happen. I'm really glad that I did decide to take. If I had done something else, let's say this move, I'm in a bit of trouble because he just takes here. I can't recapture because he wins my queen. And so how do I get rid of this? I got to go queen f7. And now he just takes another pawn. I can't recapture this with the queen. He's forking both my pieces, so I have to recapture with the rook. And now we've just traded off. And my opponent's up a pawn. Not the greatest. So I'm really happy that I took. 
was a big trade-off there. Uh, moving g5 was the biggest mistake in the game. I took a lot of time to think here, and I wasn't really sure what my next move should be. I think a helpful rule in chess is if you're unsure of what to do, develop your pieces. Just get your pieces developed. You don't have to have a plan yet. Just get your pieces involved in the game. So this move with the knight is very obvious. Uh, in this position, it looks like a great move. It doesn't uh, allow me to do anything fancy yet, but it is getting a piece just further into the game, more into the action. So that's what I should have been doing. So this was a mistake. And actually, the big reason about this move being a mistake was he has h4. And if I just take h4, now he can take on h4 with his knight. And he can move his rook in to attack my king. His queen can come in to attack my king. And it just looks like I'm the one that's being attacked. And he's not being attacked. Uh, his pieces are more active. His knight's closer to the action here. My knight's way back on b8. This move was definitely my big mistake. I need to make sure that I'm developing my pieces. That's the key takeaway from this video. Develop your pieces. The rest of the game was pretty smooth. Here, the game is over. Uh, this move was definitely not the quickest move at the end of the game. I could have done something simple like this. And the only thing he has is to block. I could also have just done this. And the only thing he has is to block. So both moves win the game in two moves for me. If I ever get anything over 80, I'm really happy. So getting something over 90, I'm very happy. See you guys maybe tonight on the live stream.